Matthew 3, uh, verse 16 and 17 says, And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Today's reading is from Matthew 3, verse 13 to 17, reading from the King James Version of the Bible. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John, to be baptised of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptised of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfil all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptised, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Here in this moment of scripture, we have the Trinity present. Coming out of the water, we have Jesus, the Son. And descending like a dove, there is the Holy Spirit, and the one speaking from heaven, the Father. And he is pleased with his Son. We have the Trinity present in this moment. The three in one. The Bible clearly speaks of how there is only one God. We have, for example, what is known as the Shema Israel, which speaks of the oneness of God. This passage is from the book of Deuteronomy. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be upon thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine home, in thy ho in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be for frontlets between thine, eye thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the doorposts of thy house, and upon thy gates. Yes, it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. There is one God. The commandments also speak of how we're to worship only one God. But there are three persons within this one God, according to Scripture. And we find them here in this passage in Matthew. This is not the only time in Scripture that we hear of the Trinity. In fact, there are many, many verses which speak of the Trinity. Although the word Trinity itself might not be a common phrase in, in uh, Scripture, in fact, I don't even know if it's in Scripture at all, the actual phrase Trinity, I'm not sure, but it is certain that the Trinity exists, exists and is spoken of in scripture. Jesus himself mentions these three persons in the book of John in verse uh, chapter 14 verse 26 when he speaks of uh, how the father was going to send the Holy Spirit in the name of the son. The comforter which is the Holy Ghost whom the father will send in my name he shall teach you all things. 
It also appears uh, around uh, baptism in another passage of scripture in Matthew 28 verse 19 when it says it commands uh, people to be baptized in the name, the name of the Father and in the name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Ghost. The Trinity is also present uh, within a Christian's prayer life. When a Christian prays, the Holy Spirit helps them to pray and also makes intercession for us to the Father. You're encouraged to pray in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says that Jesus is at the right hand of God, making intercession for us, and that God dwells in Christians through the Holy Spirit. Some verses of note, uh, Romans 8, 26 to 27, John 16, 23 to 24, and Romans 8, verse 34. Although there are three in this trinity, they are all one, as mentioned. They are one in essence, one in their attributes, one in their power and one in their purpose. They are a community of unity. They are unparalleled. There is no one else like God. In Isaiah 45, 22, it says, Look unto me, and be ye saved all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. Mark 12, 29 says, The Lord our God is one. And John 12, 44 to 45, speaks of the fact that he that believeth on me, that is Jesus, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. John 14 verse 9 also reiterates this and it says, He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. The Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 10. It is a truth that these are deep things and it is hard for us to understand in our human capacity. But we see as through a glass darkly, as Paul says in Corinthians, one day we will see face to face, but for now we see as through a glass darkly. Whilst there are plenty of ways of explaining the Trinity, for example, the typical um, three-leaf clover idea and things like that, it is true that understanding the Trinity and understanding God, God himself, is impossible in human terms. We have nothing on earth that is like our God. We have nothing on earth that has quite a relationship that the Trinity does within itself. Some would say, our belief in the Trinity cannot be based on reason. I would argue it is reasonable, but it is also a deep act of faith. We cannot lean on our own understanding, but we should lean on the one who gives understanding. We must have faith in the word of God, and the word of God speaks of this mighty, wonderful Trinity. Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, But without faith it's impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So I encourage you, have faith in the Trinity. Take note that he is a mighty God. Take note that he is mighty to save. Take note that he is the creator. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And you know how he did this? Simply by speaking. He made all things of nothing. He is a wonderful creator. 
He's a creator then, and he's a creator now. This is the God who truly loves people, but who truly hates sin. His love sent Jesus, and Jesus came willingly, and he died on the cross to save people from their sin. Though we have a fallen nature, a sinful nature, God is in the business of restoring people. Today we can follow the New Testament, we can follow the scriptures by the power of the Holy Spirit, only because he gives us the necessary power. We want a faith that produces obedience. This is the way to please God. Hebrews 11 speaks of a faith that pleases God. Let's read it together. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by, by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were, were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it he, being dead, yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation he had this testimony, that he pleased God. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed and went out, not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which, he, which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Though faith, uh, through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed, and was delivered of a child when she was past age, because she judged him faithful, who had promised. Therefore, sprang there even of one, and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country that is unheavenly, unheavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith Jacob, when he was a dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning upon the top of his staff. By faith Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his, par of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction of God than in to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, 
for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea, as by dry land, which the Egyptians are saying to do were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down, after they were com compassed about seven days. By faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not, when she had received the spies with peace. And what shall I more say, for the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, and of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, of David also, and Samuel, and of other prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, asunder, were tempted, were slain with a sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth, and these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise, God having provided some better thing for us, that they, without us, should not be made perfect. This is what is required of us, through the grace of God, that we live in faith. Hebrews 8 verse 10 speaks of the new covenant. It says, For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. I encourage you, yield to the almighty creator, the almighty loving God, have his laws written on your heart. Allow God to give you a new nature, to become part of his new creation. He is a creator from the beginning, and he is a creator now. Allow him to be your own personal God, your own personal saviour, your own personal father. Allow the Holy Spirit to guide you and comfort you and move you into a godly life. I encourage you to look to this true and almighty triune God. Do you believe in the Jesus who came out of the waters of baptism and who also came out of the grave? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit who descended like a dove do you believe in the Father who spoke from heaven? Do you believe? I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. Some words as we come out of the silence. These are words from the Westminster Shorter Catechism, question number six, including some scripture proofs. How many persons are there in the Godhead? There are three persons in the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one God, the same in substance, equal in power and glory. Some scripture proofs. 2 Corinthians 13 verse 14. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. Matthew 28, verse 19, Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Matthew three sixteen to 17, And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, and lighting upon him, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Amen. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. 
The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Why are we here? Why do the nations rage? Why do the wicked prosper? Where do wars come from? Who am I, Lord? What must I do to be saved? Revival. How long, Lord? How long, Lord? In all of our questions, you have the answers. Help us to keep asking questions. Help us to listen. Help us to be. And know that you are God You are God Help us to be still that you are God.